Welcome to the very last episode of this completely free Archicad course. What's going on team? My name is David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today I'm sharing with you how you can export all of this information and present it to the world. Last time we left off with our door and window schedule. Now it's time to put everything into perspective and export it ready to go. If we jump across to our layout book up the top, you see we have a series of pages and folders. We also have our master templates down below as well. For the purpose of this, I'm simply just gonna open our design development folder, which is gonna show you a series of different pages. So if I double click on our drawing list, for example, it'll indicate all the pages in this drawing list. It'll tell you some instructional information, generically speaking, of what it would like you to see on this page. It is completely up to you guys how and what you place on these pages. Personally, I probably wouldn't put a satellite image, but hey, up to everybody individually. Of course, you have the generic title block down the bottom as well, which defines all of the information required on an architectural documentation package. Now, everything you see with a little hashtag sign, certifier, hashtag civil engineer, if we go into file, info, project info, you see there is a bunch of options that we can add or deduct from. So I've already put the project name as free YouTube course and it will populate all of that information. But if we go to certify down below and we go that guy and mechanical engineer, we go one man band, press okay. You'll see it automatically changes all that information. Before you export any of these documents, you obviously wanna go through all of this information, cross check, make sure it is correct and make sure that the information is up to date at all times. Here you'll see replace with your logo and you can't actually do anything. You can't double click on it. You can't drag and drop. And that's because this is the actual template master file, which is down here. If we wanna find out what we're using, we go right click layout settings and we see we're using the A1 landscape title block. If you click on that, you can change the title block to different page sizes as well. So if you didn't want an A1 page, you could change it and you can also change the numbering automatically. We won't dive too far into that. I did make a separate video entirely on layouts and title blocks. So if you wish to use that, you can. But if we come down to our master, double click on our A1 landscape title block, you can see we can now click on everything in the title block. This is part of a source and it's been dragged and dropped in. So right click, open source view, and it will take you directly to that information. So if we wanted to replace that logo, drag and drop outs in there, we absolutely could, no problems whatsoever. Going back to our drawing list and working our way through, you'll see. Now, if you're new to Archicad, you're probably also new to residential design as a whole. If you are, Louis Ferruccio's Graphic Guide to Residential Design is an excellent ebook. There is a link down below, but it basically showcases you all the steps, all the logic, and all the reasons why every architect around the world makes logical and rational decisions about their designs. All the units inside are both in metric and imperial to cater to the entire world. Lewis has done an amazing job and deserves full credit on this ebook, hence why I'm sharing this resource with you guys today. A01 site survey has no information on it because we don't have a site survey available to us. So we could either delete that page, omit it, or do whatever we wish. A02 automatically has the information on our site plan. Now, this site plan is at a one to what, 200 scale, whereas personally I prefer it as a one to 100 scale. So if we double click on our site plan, let's change this to one to 100. You'll see a lot more information and context become available. We can then change a few of our settings down below. So it goes into black and white. It has site plan, no filters applied. We can go settings. We can go get current window view and press okay. We would then obviously go in, add all of our extra information, our annotations, our dimensions, our angles, etc., etc. all relatively self-explanatory. So for instance, dimension, click once, click twice, right click, okay, drag it out to where you want and the dimension is created. That sort of stuff for the basic documentation, I won't need to go into. It is self-explanatory, literally, just go through them one by one, click them, try it out, there is nothing special. Now, if we go back to our A2 site plan, that will automatically update to one to 100 scale. 
and it's slightly too big over the page. So what I'm gonna do is Command D, drop it down ever so slightly, click on the edges, reduce the size, and place it in the center of the page because that's just how I personally like it. It's up to you guys how you place everything, how you define it on the page, and what you put on each. Everything here is simply a guide. Now, if you are unsure of what goes on every single page and what information is required, if you jump onto davidtomich.com.au, there's a link down in the description for this as well. Jump into products, go to our all-in-one checklist. So enter into that product. And basically, this will provide you with a series of checklist items, 258 checklist items in total, defining exactly what needs to be on every page. So as a quick glimpse into this checklist, I have not shown these before. I try to avoid showing this information because obviously you have to pay for it. However, this is the complete one out of two pages for sketch design, and this is the first of 10 pages for construction drawings. Basically, you need to have all of this information on each individual plan. So we have our site plan, one to 200 minimum scale. Do you have a north point, scale bar, title block? Are all of your external walls, columns, concrete deckings, etc., annotated and detailed? If they're not, you have to go through this checklist to find out. So once they're done, you simply tick all of the boxes. The PDF is incredibly reactive. I have detailed this as a black document because I believe you should not have to print these out. You should be able to use it digitally time and time and time again, and let's save the planet wherever we can, guys. So I've used it as a negative doc. Think before you print and simply use it as a digital document as you require. Again, the link is in the description if you wanna grab this to make sure you know everything that needs to go on each individual page. Continuing to work through all of the pages, the process is exactly the same and quite familiar. If we click through the pages, you'll see elements start popping up in the wrong directions. So all you need to do is drag the edges, correct the information where you need it to be, drag and drop exactly where you'd like it to be in that page and continue moving on. If for any instance you get to, let's say elevations and information is missing or you'd like to have something extra on this page, all you have to do is come back to your view map, find the information that you're trying to look for. So let's say we wanna show our ground floor here for whatever reason, doesn't really matter. All you have to do is drag, drop, and it will include the ground floor plan into that page. Then you simply adjust all of the information, drag it to where you need to be, and you have that ground floor showing us the elevations or whatever you might need. I don't need that, simply delete it, but that is how you would work around information missing on the architectural plans. Now there's also a number of ways to export this PDF. The simplest way is to simply go into this drop-down menu, go show organizer. Let's stretch this out ever so slightly. Come across to our publishing set and you can do it in a number of ways. You can export to a PDF, you can batch render, folder structure, you can also export DWGs here as well. In this instance, we could simply drag the whole thing across, right click, publisher properties, define the path. Let's just save that to our desktop. Press OK, press OK. And we can either merge it to one PDF or export it as multiple PDFs. For me, it's easier to merge as one PDF, hit the publish button, let it do its thing. It may take a while depending on how many pages you have and how much information is there. And then go to your desktop, double click the PDF and you'll see everything has exported as you have placed it. Now, obviously I haven't gone through and detailed any of this, put anything in the correct places. So you will have to do that. But all the information that you will need is here and ready to go. Anyway, team, that's all for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next Monday.